Greetings folks, welcome. When we're analyzing a quantitative variable, we'll often focus on a distribution's shape, center, and spread. Here's a distribution that has a symmetric shape, so we'll use the mean and standard deviation to characterize this distribution's center and spread. Here's a histogram showing the Instagram following of celebrities, and unlike the histogram you just looked at, this one is highly skewed. In fact, it's very skewed to the right, and the skewed statistic of 2.53 confirms this very strong skew. Because it's a skewed distribution, you'd use a five-number summary to characterize the center and spread. The five-number summary is the minimum value, the first quartile, the median, which is also known as the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum value. In the distribution of the Instagram following of celebrities, over 70% of the celebrities had between zero and 20 million followers, and there were smaller percentages of celebrities in the right tail of the distribution that have lots of followers. We could say that those celebrities are different than the rest of the distribution. Again, 70% of the celebs have between zero and 20 million, so if you're somebody that has 100 or 125 million followers, you are different than the rest. And some of these observations that are different, we can formally call outliers. An outlier is an observation that falls sufficiently outside the pattern of the rest of the distribution. For example, if you aced a test that had a class average of 60%, you might be an outlier. One way of determining whether or not an observation is an outlier is to calculate its z-score. Of course, a z-score tells us an observation's relative placement within a distribution. So here's a formula for calculating a z-score. Zi, and the i index is the observation, so that means that every observation has a z-score, equals xi, that's the value of the observation you're interested in, minus x bar, which is the mean, divided by s, which represents a standard deviation. So you interpret a z-score as the number of standard deviations that an observation is either above or below the mean. A positive z-score tells you that the observation is greater than the mean, a negative z-score tells you that it's less than the mean. Let's say we have a z-score of 2.5. That tells us that the observation is 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. Or say a z-score of minus 1.4 tells you that the observation is 1.4 standard deviations below the mean. The cutoff for a z-score that we typically use to identify an outlier is a z-score greater than 3 or less than minus 3. In other words, if an observation is more than three standard deviations from the mean, either above it or below it, you might consider that observation to be an outlier. Why is it that we use that cutoff of three standard deviations above or below the mean to identify outliers? Well, part of the explanation comes from what we call the empirical rule. The empirical rule is also known as the 68-95-99.7 rule. The empirical rule tells us that if you have a normal distribution, let's say it's bell-shaped, symmetric, and single-peaked, 68% of the observations are within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% are within two standard deviations of the mean, and almost the entire distribution, or 99.7% of it, fall within three standard deviations of the mean. Here's a picture of the normal distribution. and We've calculated all the values into z-scores. So you see a z-score of zero is the center of the distribution. That's because a z-score of zero corresponds with the mean value. As you move to the right, you see a z-score of 1, 2, and 3. As you move to the left, you see a z-score of minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Again, those values are interpreted as the number of standard deviations that a value is above or below the mean. And the empirical rule tells us that 99.7% of the observations fall within three standard deviations. So if you do calculations and you find a z-score of, say, 3.5 or 4, or you find a z-score of, say, minus 3.5 or minus 3.8, given that 99.7% of the observations fall within three standard deviations of the mean, it would be quite unusual to find values that are either greater than 3 or less than minus 3 for their z-score. So let's say I told you that the high temperature in June has a normal distribution with a mean of 73 degrees and a standard deviation of 3 degrees, a high of, say, 85 degrees, which would be a z-score of 4, would be considered an outlier. In other words, it would fall outside the pattern of the distribution. Likewise, if I told you that the high temperature in June has a normal distribution with a mean of 73 and a standard deviation of 3 degrees, a high of only 63 degrees, which corresponds with a z-score of minus 3.33, would fall outside the pattern of this distribution. Mm -hmm.